Hi, this is Charlie giving you Friday's live trading. I hope you're very well. Um, there's not a lot that we're looking at here yet um, this morning. I've been chatting away with the guys. It's what, just 8 o'clock now. Um, I was just looking at the euro dollar, it just come down into a little um, um, small time frame um, support, and um, I was just going to see if that was going to hold and then potentially put a trade in. But as we can see, it's not holding at the moment, so, um, so I can pretty much ignore that. Um, so, not We'll see if it if it still bounces back up again, then um, then I could do something. But otherwise, um, just going to play a waiting game here this morning, and um, see how these markets are going to move. But I don't have anything um, just yet, so I'll press pause now. Okay, so the Aussie dollar here has um, come down a bit. I'm just waiting to see if I, it, it's not a big target far far away. Actually, it's only at seventy two eleven, um, the daily pivot. So I'm really obviously to try and short it here. It's not enough pips in it. So if I can get a few, just a, a little bit of a blip up towards my ATMA here, um, then I will put a, a short in. It wouldn't require a big stop, and so, um, but it, it needs to do at least do a little blip. But um, I'm asking a lot this morning, trying to find these little opportunities. Um, I could have shorted it up here, but it, I felt it looked a bit too messy at that point, and too could have gone either way. Um, so I'm um, elected not to, but it has come down. So it's now just a case of seeing whether I can still get in um, with the low amount of pips that are available, and see if I can get something off here today. Um, but at the moment, um, there's there's not a lot um, for me. Now, don't get me wrong. There's been some movements here this morning. Now the euro sold off, but that wouldn't have set up for me. So there's nothing there for me. So. Um, and likewise the yen's come up a bit but again it's one of those mornings when I haven't had everything lined up so if I don't have it lined up then I usually just walk away so um, we'll just see I'm sat here with the traders in the trading room at the moment um, just seeing if I can get this little blip up on the Aussie dollar and if I can I might still be able to um, um, get a short in so if, I, if it does come up just a few few pips a couple of pips or so um, then I'll go in just with a stop up here so it'll be a pretty much a less than 10 pip stop and just see if it can then break. So um, I am fingers on the tri trigger. I'm just waiting here, and we'll see if I can get a um, a little retracement. So um, and then I'll put in um, I'll put four lots in just to you know because it's such a small stop and everything else. Then I'll go four lots, but um, and see if it can eventually run down. So um, we're getting closer to what I'm looking for. So I'm just looking for. Couple more, pip, oh, well, maybe a pip or so, really, and see if I can get in. So I'll press pause just while I'm waiting. Oh no, it's so close to going. I'm, I'm reluctant to press pause. Um, I say going. Um, um, I think I'm actually going to put a unit in just here at 20.4. 20 okay, so I put one lot in. So I'm short one lot there at uh, 20.4. Here's the second one. At, okay, two lots in now. So I've got my two units in now. Um, remember that I'm only putting the stop up in the upper 20s, just a bit above that 5 minute 50. So um, so I've got two in so far. I'm just seeing if we can get a slightly better price. Let's just see. Now, interestingly, um, I had a question that was interesting. Oh, I just missed out the second, the third unit there. Um, nearly. Um, so just while I'm talking here. Um, I had a, an interesting sort of... Uh, question come in on the blog page um, I think it was a week ago um, by, by a trader saying Charlie you add into losing trades and I was like no I don't um, I separate my my trades so if I'm going to be trading with four lots I separate it into one lot increments um, because it enables me to get sometimes get slightly better prices as I'm just trying to edge into trades so it's not adding into trades um, adding into trades is something completely different and so um, I just then just pop my stop up and then I'm in. So um, the main thing is when you're trading is that adding into trades is in when you go in at let's say your one percent max risk, let's say, and then you actually I could put a third unit in there. There we go, third units in, um, and I'll just wait and see if we can get a fourth one if it just pl pip plops up a little bit more up to wait maybe towards my upper band. But um, is when you, let's say you're in at one percent risk and then you decide when it comes down against you. Um, to then add another 1% or something like that. That's adding into um, a losing trade because you shouldn't be going, let's say you've got a 1% is your maximum maximum risk and then you opt to um, 
um, to trade outside of that risk. So that's sort of adding in really. So no, I just split my trade my units up so that I can get in in my small units. When it means that I can then take my profits because I've split my my units, I can then um, take my profits. So um, let's get this third one in actually, and then I'm done it's for the sake of like a whatever it is, one pip or whatever. So I've got my four units in now, and it mean, just means that by having the, by splitting them, it means that if it does break down and I get down to profits, I can then at least have the option to take partial profits off with the different increments that I've put in. So let's um, talking of increments, let's get those um, up now. So I'm just going to get my stops in place first of all so um, I'll bring one of them up um, but I'm gonna pop my stop up at about 28 up here so um, let's just do that so uh, 72 72 28 uh, that looks like it'd be enough as far as um, this is concerned um, it could just be noisy and and go up there um, just have a look. No, 29. I'll put it in at 29. Um, but um, it doesn't look like I need to have much more of a stop. It's already below that level, that 5 minute 50. So I'm putting the stop the other side of that at 29 and um, take it from there. So I'm just going to get the other stops in place. I'll just press pause while I'm doing all that. So, okay, so it's the Aussie dollars are coming down. Um, it just played within its bands and it's rolling over. Um, so it's coming down, but it's not quite at that target of that daily pivot yet. The daily pivot's down at one eleven, sorry, seventy two eleven point eight. So let's call it twelve on the charts. Um, it'd be roughly there. Um, what I would look to do is that um, when it comes to that daily pivot, if it gets, if it can get down there, um, it doesn't have to. It's just hit a thirty minute fifty at the moment. Um, but if it can get down to that daily pivot, then I'll take three quarters off. Um, three, so I'll take three of these units off and then just leave one one on, so um, one remaining. So um, we'll see. One thing I can do though at this stage is move the stop um, down to about 26, down to this um, this high, the last lower high here. Um, so I can move that stop. I'm just going to double check. Um, if I move that stop, we, we're in the potential for a bounce here off this 30 minute 50, but um, the way the momentum is, no, I don't really want too much of a bounce, so that's fine. Um, so I can move the stop down to 26. So I'm going to move the stops down. I'll just turn the mic off, uh, turn the recording to pause again, but I'll move the stop to 26. Okay, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. So I'm looking to take these units off um, as we're getting. We're right on top of the pivot, so my finger is on the trigger. Um, we're not quite there yet, but um, I think if I see 13 on here, that might be about where that daily pivot is. So. I see 13 on here, so it's all really small stuff, unfortunately, here this morning. Um, the um, it's it's not huge, but um, we'll see if we can get a runner with the final final unit if it, if it does get down there. But I've, I've pressed record, and now I've pressed record, it's just hovering. So um, I might have to press pause again in a minute um, as it's now hovering as I've pressed record. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to press pause. Right, just back, and um, this Aussie got so close to that target, got to about a, a pip, pip and a half away, and um, as we can see, it's it's really bounced off that 30 minute 50. It's going uh, to take you out to a 30 minute chart. There's the 30 minute 50, the white line that it's come down. It just overshot it slightly. I was just wanted it to overshoot that a little bit more, and so far, it's um, obviously put in a, a nice bounce on that. It was always going to be a, a slight risk there, but um, it's not going to be, as far as risk is concerned, the stop's at 26, so it's just got to go the other side of 26 and I'll get stopped out. So towards 27 and I'll get stopped. Um, because of that's the way the orders work on here. The term of, but stopping at 26, then it'll, it'll need to go beyond that on the on the bid, not just the offer. So, um, But it's not going to be a, a huge amount as, the, as a result of trading the stop. Um, so watch, watch this live as it's... Um, possibly going to stop me out here and then this is a case of just playing a wait, watching a waiting game there we go okay so I have been stopped um, 157 pounds I've lost on that trade so I'll just bring up the um, a screenshot of it because I can't um, I mean too many swing trades at the moment but um, if I bring up a screenshot of this trade there it is um, so these were the four, four units that I put in and and that's the the loss there of £157 at the moment. Oh, 
on that trade. So I'll carry on watching these markets this morning and see if there's anything else we can um, pick up at some point. So um, I'll press pause now. Um, okay, so I'm just back and I'm immediately almost looking at the pound. The pound's been coming up and it might have the opportunity to um, to run up to an hourly 100. Now, I just need a little dip. I'm going to put just two units on this one and um, just need a, a little dip if I can get it um, because there's no the hourly 100 is only at 19. It's all small stuff here and look, it's, it's going towards it already. So it looks like I'm going to miss out on that. I needed a little dip to get the better price in order to at least capture about 10 pips out of that but um, as you can see it's just jumped there at the um, at the open of the new bar um, the hourly 100 is at 19 so it's practically there so um, I was just seeing if we can get a cheeky little pullback to my outer band to then get an entry but um, at the moment it's um, popped so I'll keep my eye on it and I'll come back to this okay so it is coming down so I'm getting close there so let's get a unit in there's one in at 09 so I'm buying it at 09 there um, that's practically about enough. So let's see if oh, I was looking off screen. Then it's blipped up just while I'm I was looking away. So if we can get back down to that sub ten again, I'll get the second unit in. It's all playing with small stuff here this morning. Um, it'll only be um, I'll put about a ten pip stop in on this one as well because it again it needs to go um, pretty much. So um, the momentum's there, so it needs to just go. So let's bring up the um, the actual ticket as well. That's the um, ticket I've just got in there at 09. Um, so it's just a case of um, whether I can get this second unit in as well. Um, so it's just blipped immediately as I hit it. I see. So um, if I can't, then I'm only in with the one lot. But you know, a lot of time they'll play around a little bit. So let's just see if I can get the second unit in. Uh, I'll put a, stop, a 10 pip stop behind it. No, it's not going to have it. It's going up there, isn't it? It's getting closer towards that. Um, that target by looks of things. So I don't know if I'm going to get this second unit in or not yet. Dead air here, Charlie. Come on. Are you going to press pause or are you going to carry on talking? So um, that's the way, way sometimes when they're moving around a little bit, uh, you um, you don't want to press pause because you know it could go in the space of a second or two. <laughs> one way or another so um, let's see if I'm gonna get this second unit in. okay looks like I might be able to get this second unit in so um, 10.3 let's see if I can just get that in I'm about to hit it to so see it there we go 9.5 right okay so I've got the two units in now so let me just get rid of that uh, move these off I've got to get the stop losses in place so um, I'll do that in a second as well let's put those there so I'm gonna put a stop in um, Ooh, did I say 10 pips? Better hurry up because it's coming down. So I'm just quickly get my stops in place. So what I'll do is I'll put my stops in at 139.99. Uh, so it's 10 pip stop. 139. Right, so I've got my stops in place. So now it's coming back off. So my stop's just below this 140 level. So it do, looks a bit tight, but the momentum was all starting to go upwards. So it really shouldn't want to do too much of a retracement, um, and it should just want to continue. If it's going, if that's the ca if that's the case, uh, otherwise I just don't want to bother being in it, and um, because it might then want to come, you know, all the way back down to 85 or whatever, and I'm not willing to sit on that amount of drawdown. So um, we'll um, just see what's going to happen here, but. Um, it really should be holding up um, if, it, if it's going to. I don't need to have that higher stop. So let's just see. Right. I think I'll just press pause for the time being because I've been running this for a bit now. Okay, just back. And um, yeah, I've taken a loss on the Aussie now as well. So I've taken, let's just bring up the um, the trades for the, sorry, on the pound here. So, um, so there's 169 pounds loss on that one. So it's two small trades at the moment, but you know they add up, and so um, two two stop outs. One thing I've just noticed is if I go back to the Aussie, look at that. Oh no, it's had that bit of a, a, a bounce there. I'd move my stops down because I felt that it was okay to move them down, and um, it's come up, and now has roll is rolling back over. So um, that's a miss there. So um, as a result of the um, the stop there. So I think um, that high is at 28.6. Mm, 
it's poss I might have still got stopped out there because I think my stop was at 29 initially so um, I may well have still got stopped out there anyway actually but um, I may not have done you can you never know um, but it would have been very close um, okay so uh, oh what <laughs> right and the pounds now um, um, bouncing back up here so um, if I get stopped here then oh sorry if it goes up here then um, then that's going to be a good example of um, poor stop placement here this morning um, or you can say it's poor stop placement or you can just say it just didn't work and um, you know I looked at that momentum there and like I said the momentum suggested that I don't need to have a big stop um, but maybe just got nicked if that's the case and cable goes up there then um, then it'll mean that it was just that little bit too tight um, it went down to what the 96 97 something like that it went to a low of 98 um, so it's back up at 06 but we'll see um, so if it does break up here then that will suggest that my stop was just that little bit too too tight there this morning so we shall see um, I shall press pause for the time being we'll come back to this and see whether it does get up there okay just back and um, we can see that I've got nicked out there on this pound by a, a pip down at this low and we can see it's come straight back up it's up back up at 12.13 again now and I was looking for 19 which is that, um, that Audi 100 so it looking like my stop was just too tight here this morning on this one and probably too tight on the Aussie dollar as well so poor stop placement uh, management here today um, trying to be too aggressive maybe um, and I've just mi missed out by a pip or so probably should have had to stop another five pips lower maybe um, but even at five pips lower it still would have been relatively tight still could have come down to 95 and then still bounced but um, but anyway so far um, it's bouncing back up so it could well be that just poor poor um, stop placement here this morning the Aussie dollar as we can see is rolled back over um, it could well work its way down there now again if I'd have left my stop in the original position I've double checked it I think that one would have been okay I wouldn't have got stopped up there so it's two poor stop outs um, or stop outs based on um, maybe the, the stops being that little bit too tight so it's a bit of a shame there this morning um, so I'll press pause and we'll see if there might be another opportunity but um, I've had two stops, two stop outs now, so we'll we'll see what comes up back to that. Right, so the pound has come up to that target. It's up at twenty one, twenty two now. So um, that was a, a poor show for me this morning. In that um, my stop was just too aggressive. I should have probably had it, given it that bit more, bit more. Um, the, again, the only shame is, and sometimes what I'm looking at is, I'm always conscious of risk to reward. So if I'd have given it too much of a stop, a, a, a wider stop then my risk reward gets skewed because the target was only 19 so that's, prob that's another factor as to why I put a 10 pip stop in because I was only looking for a 10 pip target but sometimes I, what I've effectively done there is I've imposed my will onto the market by saying okay I want to have this one to one risk reward but the stop just wasn't quite enough so uh, therefore I, what, I had two choices either wait for it and see if it comes down a little bit more so that I can put a lower stop in or have to accept that I can't take the trade um, if the risk reward isn't going to be there so those are the other um, choices there so it's an interesting um, um, situation here today um, and I think this is a really good point on this uh, cable trade um, I've only just thought of it is that that's going on the back of my mind the risk reward um, and if I had a widened had to stop too wide then the risk reward goes inverted um, and I'm not really generally looking for that so um, it could well have been that I should have just waited and seen if it pulled back some more and if it didn't then just not taken the trade um, because the risk reward wasn't there anyway cable has got up to that level so um, um, and let's have a look at the Aussie dollar because the Aussie dollar is sitting here it's looking still it's chopped around a bit but it, it's still got that potential target down there at that um, 72 um, 11 or 12 area so it looks like I've just been nicked out of that one today as well so um, I'll press pause for now but um, yeah two nick outs based on stops today okay just back um, it's now um, mid morning it's quarter past 11 and I was just having a chat with the traders in the room and um, so I just want to do a review of this Aussie dollar because if we remember um, I got into this Aussie dollar this morning at uh, um, over here somewhere wasn't it 21 the average was I think it was oh yeah over here where, when it did this retracement um, it came down got so close to the the daily pivot with like I said within a pip or two 
pip, pip and a half, whatever it was, um, and then came way up. And the mistake that I made, well, we can call it a mistake. I trailed my stop at that point down to the, down to just um, above this high. And um, whereas if I'd have left it at the original level at 29, then I wouldn't have got stopped out. And then gradually, eventually, it's just rolled over. So it's one of those ones where it's just chopped around a bit. And um, I've got stopped out on the chop by by managing the risk. Now you can argue that well, it's one of those things, and it is one of those things in trading. You shouldn't over get, get you know, too over analytical. But sometimes you have to review your trades, and you say, well, actually, if you had to just you you accept the risk at the outset of the trade um, tr by trailing the stop down. I it was more just a, I didn't expect it to ever come back up there. I thought it was just going to come down at this point and come to the level, the target. But anyway, but it did, and because it hit that 30 minute 50, if you remember. So looking at this one in hindsight, and hindsight is a wonderful thing, sh probably should have just given it that little bit more slack and left left the stop where it was today. And that would have eventually come down to my to my level. Um, if we go and review the pound trade as well, the pound um, has actually subsequently fallen over, but it, I remember I was only looking for 140.19, so I'd have been out by here anyway. But when I took that trade, um, it always comes down to the ultimately to the risk reward, and and um, when it pulled back, um, I was looking at a ten pip stop because I knew it was only going to be a ten pip target, um, but uh, applying my own um, um, will against the market there wasn't enough by me saying, well, I only want to have a ten pip stop. It, it, it needed those extra few pips, so I mean, it literally stopped me out by a pip, I think it was, and then came way back up. So two very close calls there today, but I think it's a great learning experience. Um, if you're watching this today, I think there actually have been um, two good um, learns to say actually. But on both of those trades, Charlie was overall correct. His analysis was correct, but the Aussie dollar he trade managed um, in a way that got him stopped out. So maybe he was too aggressive on that. And on the pound dollar, he um, his stop was just that little bit too tight for the trade. So he should have either waited to see if it came down a little bit lower, or probably not even taken the trade at that point because he's because of where he was going to have to place his stop. The risk reward wasn't quite going to be there. Um, so um, good, two good learns there. We're 22 minutes into this, but I'm quite happy to hold on today and see if there's anything else comes out a bit later. So I'm going to keep an eye on the markets and just in case something happens later this afternoon. Okay, just back. So it's now what twenty three minutes past one in the afternoon here UK time. We've got some news coming out in the US, some GDP figures coming out. Um so I'm just hanging around just to see how we're gonna react to that. This Euro's come back down to its morning's lows now. So I am watching this. It's starting to gear up for a potential maybe a run lower. I don't know yet. But if it starts coming down but if it starts coming down after the news, then I may chase it and see if I can get in on an entry um, with a run down to the daily S1 pivot and yesterday's low, which is down at 109.86. So it's not too far below where we currently are, but I've got to wait for the news first anyway. And then also what we've got is this dollar yen, which has had a lovely turnaround here. It's the five minute chart. So if I go out to the hourly time frame, it's um, holding up quite nicely. I'm just looking to see if that might have a break up. Um, so I could trade either the euro or the dollar yen. So I'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, so watching this euro, just at the beginning, we've got 15 seconds to go to the news. Just see if, if it is going to break down or not. Um, if it's going to come up, then we can ignore all of that. If it is going to start to roll over, then we'll see. I don't know how much um, moves we're going to get, but as you can see, it's, the volatility, the spreads have widened up a bit. So and it's coming down so looks like I'll just wait for the spreads to um, um, to come in and then I'll um, look to um, get a short off on this one spreads are a bit um, closer now just let the this initial move so I um, just want to let it break it is breaking so I'm, I'm just about here so um, just a little bit of volatility we've got a little bit of a divergence on the five minute chart so I'm just letting it just um, sort itself out a little bit and um, just waiting a little bit before I um, go in just in case sometimes you get the news it looks like it's going one way and then it then it turns um, which you can never guarantee anyway but um, it looks like it is coming down but we've got a bit of a divergence here on the five minute chart but we're starting to break down on some of the other higher time frames so I think it's going to be okay it's just a case of where I can get a stop placement in again so the stop can't be too much so um, um, I'll put a, a single lot in 
on this one and then just see so um, we're just watching just watching just for a bit just want to make sure that I'm not just going in when it's doing a little divergence and um, and it's about to go and do a turnaround or something so I'm just holding off for a minute so um, holding holding for a minute here I've got an initial reaction down but um, just want to make sure this isn't because it's like I said because there's a bit of a divergence on the five minute chart here just want to make sure that that's not um, going to have an impact so um, I'll just hold here now what will happen is get this little bounce here if it then then comes down to take out this low then I'll short it so that would be nice and easy then so it's quite nice it's doing this bounce at the moment if it comes back down again to take out that low that will be it I'll short so while I'm waiting I'll press pause okay so if it starts coming down about 03 then I'll go in and I'll really be looking for it to just push then if it goes comes back down for it again so if I'm looking for it to push I can probably get away with a bit of a tighter stop so um, fingers on the trigger if we get down there okay there's 03 point something I've got to let it come down there we go right 03.3 and if it breaks that that now then I'll add another one here we go 01.4 so I was going to put one unit in but because it's come down the way it has I'm just looking for it to break now so let's just see if that can happen so let's quickly get my uh, deal tickets uh, I need to get my stops in place so I'm just going to get those in place first of all press pause while I'm just getting those actually I can just leave the chart whilst we're at it um, let's get the deal tickets up. We're looking for 86, remember? 86 I'm looking for as a target. So it's still a, a fair bit off. But um, uh, we're getting closer. I may not even have to put the stop in at this rate. So, um, But I'll, I'll put the stop in at about 05, actually. So the stop's going to be really not far away at all So now. So that's quite nice. Like I said, because it should have just gone. Exactly what it's doing. So I'm going to put that stop at 05, but I may not even have to worry about that because I'm up here and we haven't got far to go so we're getting a little run and uh, 89's um, looking for about about 86 by the looks of things yeah I'm looking off chart off my chart so we'll see if we can get that run 89's 88's let's see if we can get this run <clears throat> now can it get there um, it's close okay um, I might be able to now it's for a second there it looked like it was going to do it all in one foul swoop and so um, I wasn't even going to have to get those stops in place but um, if it starts to just ho hover then I can I can start putting them in so I'm just going to get those sorted out whilst I'm off screen so 11005 so it's going to be really tight and I was in at 03s or whatever but that's quite nice it's afforded me to do that so it should hopefully just come down I've got momentum across the board and so um, it should afford me to um, just get down there. The, the key now is whether it's right on top of that that level so hopefully it can get there not like that Aussie dollar this morning which got within a pip and then stopped so uh, 109.86 area we'll call it 87 is what I'm looking for and then it's just a case of can um, is it going to uh, break down even further so I'm just going to press pause while I'm watching this and just do some quick analysis and see if I want to try and hold on to a um, another portion of the trade if it does get down to the 86 I'm gonna have a quick look right okay just back now I think I'm gonna be happy enough with um, that 86 area so um, that will be uh, enough for me so let's just see if um, it can get down there are 89s now so we're getting close 88s I just saw um, so 88s so we're getting close I'm watching my charts off screen which is giving me the levels so we are just on top of it. We're there. 80, oh, it's not now giving it to me. 80, that's okay. It's giving me 85 instead. Thank you. 84, 85. I am out. So um, let's have a look. So I have banked here on this one. Um, bring it across. Um, now the euro can go lower and that's fine but that all I was looking for was that 86 as I've gone through so um, I've banked 128 plus 113 so it's 238 pounds so that, that um, eradicates this um, 238 the loss on the pound earlier on so all I then had was the, that if you remember from that first trade that Aussie dollar sorry I'm just trying to get the uh, Oh, okay it won't let me do it let me just um, so that's eradicated that so 238 about 240 pounds there and 170 so that leaves me on across those two trades 
with plus 70 um, but I lost remember 157 on the Aussie dollar this morning um, but, I, but I'm net plus 70 as a result of that um, the other two the trade I've just had so take 70 off that so I'm about now now down 90 quid for the day so that's not too bad so um, and really it was my own mistakes for those trades this morning anyway so actually some really good lessons from that today so I've effectively ended up with a almost like a bit of a flat day being down about whatever it is about 80 pounds I think it is actually um, about 80 pounds for the day so 80 to 90 pounds so um, not too bad and some good lessons to take from that I better stop talking because we're 30 minutes into this have a great weekend back in touch next week